Hey guys, Dr. Betts here coming out with another fantastic chemistry video and today I'm going to talk about isomers. Isomers, isomers, isomers. They are molecules that have the same molecular formula but differ in the arrangement of their atoms. Those are called isomers. So they have to have the same formula. If they have, an, if they have one atom different, they are no longer isomers, they are different compounds. These are called constitutional or structural isomers because they differ in their bond sequence, okay? They're structural isomers or constitutional isomers because they differ in their bond sequence. Now, there are other kinds of isomers. There are stereoisomers, to be uh, specific. There's also geometric isomers, okay? So let's keep that in mind. There's isomers are like a catch-all word for any molecules that have the same formula but are different somehow, okay? Stereoisomers differ only in the arrangement of the atoms in space. And all of chapter 5 actually is dedicated to that. All right. Constitutional isomers. Let's see a few examples. Here we go. Let me make that a little tinier so we can get it on the screen here. There we go. These are constitutional isomers. So let's take a look. This is C... 5 H 3 6 12. This is C 5 3 6 9 11. Sorry, pardon me. 11 12 H 12. So they have the same formula. So these two things are constitutional isomers for sure. This one is C 5 H 3 6 9 12. So these are all constitutional isomers because they all have the same molecular formula. They're just different in how they're arranged, how their atoms and their bonds are arranged. That's the only difference. Now, be very careful here. Be very careful here because a lot of times people think, for example, people think, let me get rid of some of these drawings here. People think sometimes that just because you have a different arrangement. So, for example, let's take this molecule. People sometimes think that this is a constitutional isomer. This molecule here, oops, is not a constitutional isomer of this. This one I'm circling is exactly the same as this one here. It's just drawn differently. So here they're drawn in a linear fashion. Here I drew them down, over, up, cross. But they're the same thing. All the bonds are the same. If you were to draw them out as expanded formulas, you would see they're all the same. Some people think that this is different. This molecule here is not different than this one. The one I'm circling and the one up top are exactly the same. They're just drawn slightly differently, but the bonds are all the same. Okay? That's the key. The bonds and the atoms are all in the same uh, relative location to each other. Here I just drew the methyl group down instead of drawing it up. These are CH3s are called methyl groups. We'll get into that more later on. Okay? So constitutional isomers have different properties. That's because they're different molecules. So these three molecules here are all different. They all have different melting points, different boiling points, different every physical property should be or has the potential to be different because they're different. They're not the same. That's one of the, one of the um, probably, if you think about it, one of the reasons why nature has chosen carbon to build life upon because carbon can be used to make you know, the same molecular formula, the same uh, five carbons and 12 hydrogens, as you can see, can make three very different molecules with very different properties. So imagine instead of just five carbons and 12 hydrogens, say we had a million carbons and, you know, whatever, seven million hydrogens. You know, how many different molecules could nature make from those? Just using the same raw materials. So it's actually quite fascinating if you think about it. The number of isomers rapidly increases as the number of carbons and hydrogens increase. Okay, so even if you just had C6H14, you'd have more isomers, more uh, possible Lewis structures that would fit the formula. Okay, geometric isomers, cis and trans. 
Sys and trans. Let me get my face out of the way there. Now, here we go. Take a look here. This molecule and this molecule are isomers of each other. They are stereoisomers because they differ in their orientation in three-dimensional space. Notice the bond sequences don't change. Carbon bonded to carbon bonded to carbon bonded to carbon. Carbon bonded to carbon bonded to carbon bonded to carbon. The sequence is the same. But now they're different in that these are stereoisomers. Here the two methyls are on the same side. Here the two methyls are on opposite side of this alkene of the double bond. They're on, op on the same side, on opposite sides. So this is known as a cis orientation with both. I usually go by the hydrogens. When both hydrogens on adjacent carbons in a double bond, so here's a double bond, here's the hydrogen, here's the hydrogen. This is a cis orientation of the hydrogen. Remember, double bonds cannot freely rotate. So these hydrogens are stuck here unless you do something chemically to it. Here, the hydrogens on adjacent carbons of an alkene. So carbon, carbon, here's the alkene. One hydrogen's going up, one hydrogen's going down. This is trans, this is a trans orientation, okay? So let's do that again. Hydrogen bonded to a carbon, double bond to a carbon. The hydrogens are on the same side. They're both pointing, if you will, down pointing down. This is a cis orientation. Here the hydrogen's going down, double bond, hydrogen's going up. This is a trans orientation, okay? Cis, trans. Now this one they ha has the same molecular formula as these two. If you don't believe me, prove it to yourself. Do the molecular formula for this one, this one, and that one. You'll see they're all the same. This is not a stereoisomer to these two. This is a constitutional isomer. How do I know that? Well, notice here the double bond was in the middle, and here the double bond is on the outside. So the double bond has changed. The double bond has moved. So these, this one, is related to these two as a constitutional isomer because it's not a stereoisomer because it's not cis and trans. See, it doesn't have cis and trans. These, there's two hydrogens on here, so it's not cis or trans. This is a constitutional isomer to these two right there. And you can read that at your pleasure. Hint, identical groups on one of the double bond carbons implies no cis-trans isomerism. So, so here we have a double bond, two hydrogens on the same carbon. So because one of the, double, one of the carbon double bonds has the same group attached to it, there is no cis or trans. This is, not, this is neither cis nor trans. Same for this one. Because one of the carbons of the double bond has two of the exact same groups attached to it, this is not cis nor is it trans. Like you can't use those words here. Because this is not cis or trans and neither is this one. And that's because you have two of the same groups attached to one of the double bond carbons. Same thing here, double bond carbon, two of the same groups, no cis and trans. All right, guys. And that's uh, all I have for this video. We'll come back and pick it up again with bond dipole moments. So with that, I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. See you soon.